Um, the next one is called The Ides of March because I wrote it on the Ides of March. <laughs> but I decided to give it a slightly more modern twist. An antique Colosseum march frames the scene of this long forgotten crime. Your toga rising at the shoulder as you lift your arm, your muscles tensing in flagrante delecto. Paparazzi snap the shot, your guilt for all to see. The dagger sits between his blades and Caesar's lips gasp one last breath. His eyes reflect the shock of your betrayal and his whispers words echo down the corridors of centuries. Et tu? And a bubble of blood emerges on the blue tinged lips. Brute. His final words no one records but you see them, written out in blood stains no stain remover can ever clear. Mio amico, he sighs inside his silence, his disappointment ringing loudly in your ears, clanging on and on and on. This next one is called Chow, and it's a love poem. I don't very often write love poetry, so this is a rare treat for you. <laughs> when he held me to him there, just then, I felt a quiver deep inside, an ache of longing to hold him fast and never let him go. The feeling rose inside me. I shut my lips, shut them tight. Then it lay trapped, trapped between my crawl my craw and my maw, trying to cry out. It left me raw. So I didn't watch him go, fearing he'd see the pain in me. I'm torn in two, this wanting him and wanting him to be free. Mm. This one's called Hollow. And it's actually a poem about tango because I am passionately, madly passionately in love with tango, Argentine tango specifically. And in fact, um, I am missing an evening of tango tonight. So you have to understand that you're very privileged. <laughs> um, when you start to learn tango, the lead, the follower, has to look at the man's chest to know which direction he's going in. And I always used to find it really difficult to know where to look. And I used to look at buttons and all sorts of things. But then I, <laughs> then I realized that it's really very easy to look at the hollow in a man's, just at the base of a man's throat. And I suddenly realized that it's actually rather beautiful. So I wrote a poem about this. <laughs> Gazing at that hollow that sits at the base of a man's throat, that soft spot, so tender, where a pulse so surely beats, leaves me weak with tenderness, and a longing to own the right to touch a forefinger just there. In it, I see the words he doesn't speak, and the tears he won't allow himself to cry, the caress he longs to make, and the kiss that's his to take. Okay. This is the last one, and um, I have posted this quite recently on um, on the site. And I just thought um, to myself, if I was the Earth, and um, and I wanted to let humans know that I was just a little bit pissed off about the way they're treating me, <laughs> what would I say? <laughs> Do not turn to me in your time of need. I can no longer succor you. You have forsaken me more times than I can count. You have stripped me, laid me bare, ripped at my verdant coverings, torn out the jewels hiding deep within my veins, mined me for all my deepest resources, reaped the fruits of my hard labor, thinking, oh, there's always more. Well, now I tell you this. Do not turn to me in your time of need. I can no longer succor you. All that's left is my molten core. Thank you. Thank you.